Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. I hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to do a quick video to discuss the MXN10 that Cambridge Audio sent me and my review methodology. Um, I just wanted to give you an overview of how I'm gonna test it. I'm still in the process of testing. And so the, the full review video will be coming out very shortly. But I wanted to do a quick overview. As you can see, the unit's very basic in front, very elegant too. There's four preset buttons, which you can assign to do whatever you want to do. And then on the back of the unit, as you can see, we've got an analog RCA output. We've got a coax SPDIF. We've got a Toslink SPDIF. The service port, I'm not sure what that does. There's a USB-A to plug a hard drive into, and I have, and it works wonderfully. There is also uh, an RJ45 Ethernet jack, and then you have your antennas for Bluetooth and wireless network, and of course, an AC power socket. So the way I'm going to test the unit is I'm going to have it plugged via its RCA outputs using its internal DAC, which is an ESS Sabre chip. I'll put the model number right here. And then I'm also going to connect it via a Toslink optical cable to my shit Bifrost multi-bit. And I can do instant A-B comparing back and forth. So we're going to t test it with a Delta Sigma chip that's built in against an R to R multi-bit in the uh, shit Bifrost. I'm also going to test it with headphones, my Drop 6XX headphones, and I'm going to do that on the very excellent phono preamp in the AXR100. And I'm also going to take the unit up, put it on my desktop, and I'll test the uh, MXN10 on my desktop through my shit Magni Piety headphone amplifier as well. So I will also publish a list of the tracks I used. They'll be in the description below. Um, and so I suggest you look at it. I'll also do some sound clips. Obviously, I have to use copyright free music, so it's not always the best recordings, but this stuff's pretty good. It's a jazz band from here in Chicago. Um, anyway, so that's the methodology I'm going to use. I listen for differences in the internal DAC and then with the external DAC. I may also take a coaxial output from the MXN10 and run it into my LOX GD30, so I can compare two different Sabre chips. Now the LOX G has a Sabre chip as well, and I'll put its model number here. I don't remember off the top of my head. And then I can do, honestly, I can do instant AB switching between the internal DAC in the, in the MXN10, the Bifrost multibit, and the LOX GD30, and I can just switch back and forth instantly and hear the difference. So what I'm listening for are subtle differences, and I know they're gonna be subtle. I've already given the Cambridge a bit of a listen, and I'm super impressed. I'm also going to do a dive into the Stream Magic software. I finally figured out a way to record the screen from my Android tablet. So I'll show you how the software works and how you can access Tidal Cobuzz, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. You can Chromecast. You can also do Apple AirPlay, but I'm not an Apple guy, so I can't show you that. And then how you access a hard drive and all the files on it, including DSD, because this will decode DSD. So it's a really compelling unit. And I think in the long run, what my goal with this is, is to answer the question of, do you need to buy a streamer DAC uh, with a touchscreen on it? My feeling is probably not because why would you want to get up out of your chair to go interact with a deck? Sure, you can do it through a tablet, but you can do it through a tablet with this. There is no remote control. Some of the streamer decks have a remote control, but still, you got to look at that display. And I'm pretty far away from the displays on my gear, uh, and I can't really see it. I could not really see it clearly, I don't think. I did, for a time, have an M, uh, SMSL M500 Mark III DAC in here, and that had a fairly large, bright display on it, and I still had trouble seeing what was going on with it. So my theory behind this is, or my premise is, is the MXN10 the appropriate DAC for you if you don't need a touchscreen, if you don't want to do something like a Weem Mini or Weem Pro? Honestly, I, and I have experience with the Weems, um, if to, to get a Weem to sound the same as this Cambridge, my first impressions, you'd need to spend, you know, you'd need to get a Weem Pro, maybe a Weem Pro Plus, but I think the Weem Pro would be fine. And then you'd probably need to spend three, $400 on a DAC that would rival the sound quality. Is. My, or my thoughts are, DAC chip doesn't matter. Um, it honestly doesn't. I think they're all great. They all do a wonderful job. But 
I think it's what happens once it's converted from digital to analog, how the analog signal is handled in the device. And I can vouch for the fact that in my experience, Cambridge handles the analog signal extraordinarily well. My AXR100 sounds amazing on all its analog inputs, and it does have a built-in DAC. Now it's based upon a, a, a based around a Wolfson chip, still very good. And again, I don't think the chip is as important as how the signal is handled in once it's in analog form. So anyway, that's kind of the overview of how I'm going to do the review. I just wanted to throw that out there so you guys knew what I was working on and let me know what you think. I really appreciate a like. I really appreciate a subscription. Again, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm almost at 850 right now. And honestly, looking at my analytics, about 80 or 85% of you that watch my videos don't subscribe. I would very much appreciate a subscription. You can always take it back if you find what I'm doing is not to your satisfaction, uh, but I would really be grateful for your subscription. Also too, in the bottom of all of my videos are some uh, links, affiliate links for the products I use. And if you decide, to, they're Amazon affiliate links. If you decide to purchase something, I do make a small commission. It doesn't affect what you pay, but it does help to fund the channel. I, I do this for fun, but obviously there's a cost attached with buying lights and all kinds of other stuff to make it look good. So I would appreciate that. Anyway, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I love your comments. As all of you know, or if anybody who's commented know, I respond to them. I try to respond to them as quick as I pops, possibly can. So thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. This is Ed Holmwood on the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, signing off. Yeah.